Please be seated. I want all those that are young at heart, especially the children, to come up at this time. Come on up. Josh, William. William, what happened to your tie? And there's another William. Both of you are in red. Isn't that great? Come on, Colin. Come on. Okay. Thank you, Alyssa. Excuse me, but I have to make a call. Have y'all seen one of these before? It's like ancient, isn't it? Look at it. Y'all ever seen one like this? You remember these? Remember? Yeah, yeah. Do any of y'all have a cell phone? Y'all, you have one? Okay, look at you. It's amazing. You know, when I was growing up, they didn't have cell phones. Did you know that? They had phones, but they were dial up. You know, you dial a, you know, you could dial a number or a letter because they, you know they have numbers and letters together. You all ever notice that numbers and letters? I had my uncle's phone number memorized: Tremont nine seven seven three nine. He's been long gone to heaven, and I still remember that number. What? You want it? Okay, I'll give it to you after church. Okay. Uh, the uh, uh, no after church after church after church. No, I have to. I'm preaching. Don't you know? I'm, this is a sermon. I'm preaching a sermon. Here's the deal. Look. Here, you can hold on to it. Okay. Here, go sit down though. Go go sit down. The I dial up phones. Dial up, and they had a little cord on them between the phone and the receiver. Right? Y'all remember these? Y'all ever see these? And, and I'd pick up the phone and, and we had to share our line with someone else. Isn't that amazing? We'd pick it up and there'd be somebody on the other end. What, William? Yeah, no, none of them have cords anymore, right? Yeah, well, some, none of them have these antennas anymore, William. Well, the point here is that there was a time where nobody had phones, right? Do y'all remember that? Y'all were too young for that, right? Huh? There was a time where a phone was a, even in anybody's idea bank, right? Now we've got another picture I want to show you here. Today is a Pentecost Sunday. That's why you got on red. And, uh, and you, uh, you see this picture here? Well, this is all where it began. I have, had a friend, I have a friend that's an artist, and she bugged me to death. Show the congregation, too. Uh, she bugged me to death about the first couple of verses in Genesis. And it says that everything was without form and that it was void, right? And God's spirit moved across the face of the deep, it says. God's spirit moved. Today is the day we recognize the day that the Holy Spirit of God was poured out upon his church. And that's why we wear red. Uh, in this painting that she bugged me about for a month, a month on two verses of the Bible, right? She decided that this was the way it looked. There's all this chaos and and the colors were all mixed together, and there was God. This is God here. Show, show the people out there where God is. All the, see, there's God right there. And if you look, look, God said, let there be light. See the light? See the light in the middle? See that? Show it to everybody. Show everybody the little light. See the light? Okay, you can take it back now, Turner. Thank you. Here's the deal. God's Spirit came upon the earth. And everything began to take shape, right? And a life happened. All right, I want you, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a deep breath. Now hold that breath. You know what happens when you do that? What, what would happen if you didn't have breath? What would happen, Josh? You'd be dead, right? Now, there was a time where phones didn't exist. People spoke different languages, and people couldn't communicate. But when God's Spirit moved across the people, something happened, something incredible. You know, you can take these phones. Okay, I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to give it back to you. But listen, you take these phones and you dial them, if you don't baptize them, and I baptize this one, 
you, you take these phones and you can call somebody in a different country, right? And you can speak to them and you'll hear their voice. Do you all know how that works? You know how that works? You know, Josh, you know how that works? Do you all know how that works? It's a, kind of a mystery, isn't it? I mean, we think we know how it works. The, the voice will travel in the air somewhere and it just reaches over to the foreign land and you're talking to somebody. When God's Spirit came upon the people of the church, William, that's how it sounded, said, William! It's like a big wind that threw, threw out, William. And, and here's the deal. Everybody could communicate. The communication happened in ways that never happened before. And that is what God wants for His church. He wants us to be together, to stay together, right? And the other, there's other pieces of Scripture that talks about God's Spirit, William and William. Two Williams together. Can I call you William too, Colin? Oh, you can't be William. Okay. They can have three Williams. Anyway, here we go. When God's Spirit came at baptism, right? Jesus' baptism, it was like a dove. Do you all remember that? I got you a dove over here. Come on. And remind me about this phone. I need it for the adult sermon, but I'll give it to you after the service. I promise you. Which one of y'all gets it? Huh? Oh, this is a good dove. This is a good dove. Let's see. I get it right. Ooh, that's a good dove. I want two. You want two? Okay, you can have two. How about that? There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. William, you, William doesn't get one. Father, make us the masters of ourselves that we might become the servants of others. Take our minds and think with them. Take our lips and speak through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, it, it, do you all remember these? Anybody got a cell phone on you today? If you have a cell phone, take it out right now. I want to see it. You got it on? Is it on? Is it on? Is your cell phone on? Are you texting during the service? Is yours, is yours on? Oh, Elizabeth's got one of these old-fashioned phones, too. Oh, okay, so, so some of you actually have your phones on, right? Okay, to shut them off, if you will. They, they don't, you don't need them right now. Well, we do that, don't we? We bring them to church with us, weddings, funerals. I was doing a wedding last week, and I came out while the musicians were playing this wonderful piece of music, and I walked out right here in front of everybody, and I went like this. Because, you know, they, uh, there's often in the middle of, I was at an ordination one time and one of the deacons, and the priest looked down on the deacons kind of, you know, it's a pecking order kind of thing. And, and one of the deacons' phone went off in the service, right? And I thought, what, you know, what's the guy thinking, right? Now here's the bad news. Five minutes later, during the bishop's sermon, it went off again. Now, why do we do that? You gotta, I'll try to get into my thinking about why we do it. But I want to tell you something about cell phones. Years ago, I had a dream. I've been called a dreamer many times. And I am. And I'm proud to be a dreamer. You know, if you've heard the scripture today, it said your old, young men will have visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And I think being a dreamer is okay. Right? Because I believe the dreams come to me from God Almighty. And I hope they do. And I try to get a piece about that. But uh, years ago, I had a dream to start my own business. And I had a partner, Pat. If you only ever met Pat, you'd think he was the most wonderful person in the whole world. Trudy, that's right, isn't it? Yeah. He'd give you the shirt off his back. And then he'd write you a check for $20 and say, here, go buy you a couple more. Well, maybe $40. It depends on what kind of shirt you want. And that's just the way he is. He's that way. But he uh, and I started this business, and we had great ideas. We were in the grounds maintenance landscaping business. So if you've not been here for a while, you don't know that, but th those of you, y'all have endured this over and over again, but bear with me. We, were, we started this company with nothing, but we knew everybody. We knew so many people. He had 1,500 acres that he was maintaining, and I had 3,000 acres I was maintaining when we got together. So we knew all sorts of people. 
instant work. We knew a banker that would just give us carte blanche loans. So we had equipment and we got started. But Pat could not stay focused. He had all these ideas about how to make money. So he started a painting business, right? And brought in, he was a firefighter. So he brought in a fellow firefighter to be our painter. Failed miserably, right? And then, then he decided we were going to sell cars. He was going to sell high-end cars, and we were going to make a lot of money selling high-end cars. And his first car was a uh, Tornado. You all remember the Tornados? A yellow Tornado. Remember the Tornados? You don't see any around anymore, do, do you? You know, there's a reason for that, don't you, David? <laughs> they weren't the kind of cars most people wanted, right? And, and usually they end up like the Dodo when... And so this car was a yellow tornado. Now, it wasn't bad enough that it was just a tornado. It was a yellow tornado. And he failed miserably. Right? Now, when that happens, when something fails on us, when the life uh, force is taken out of some great idea that we have, or perhaps somebody dies on us, or we lose our job, or we get diagnosed with some wretched disease, we tend to just deflate, right? Things just, the air just comes out of us. And we want air. We want to be able to breathe again, right? Uh, I used to tell Pat over and over again, I said, Pat, we're really good at what we do. We have a passion for it. We want to help people in their lives so that they can be freed up to do other things. If we just stay focused, we would make it. So here's how we stayed focused. We had two trucks. Each of us had our own truck, then the company trucks that others drove. And in those trucks, we had a two-way radio. You remember that? Adam, what is it, Adam? What is it? Anyway, 30 Adams, you know. Uh, we had a walkie-talkie that we had to carry with us everywhere. Right? Strapped to our belt. And a beeper. Do you all remember beepers? Anybody ever have a beeper? And the beeper would go off, and then you'd have to look at it, and you'd say, oh, Pat's calling, right? And then, you, then I'd have to go to a, and, then, and listen, we were together most of the time, right? But I had all these things, and I'd have to go to a payphone to call him, right? And then we got a call from the beeper brothers, who were friends of his that lived in Montgomery. You got to come to Montgomery, and we want to show you something, right? And we got down to Montgomery, and they said, we've been awarded the first franchise for cell phones in the state of Alabama. And we want you to be the first salesman. And I looked at him and I thought, I'm in the grounds maintenance landscaping business. I'm not in the cell phone business. But my partner Pat bought into it. So the first salesperson of cell phones in the state of Alabama was my business partner. Now, to get to the short of it, it failed miserably, right? Okay. Because <laughs> remember, if you remember way back then in the dark ages, when people didn't know about cell phones, you got a phone in your car and it looked just like your regular phone. Remember that? And it had a little cord on it. And you had to have an antenna drilled into your car, your trunk or your ceiling of the roof, which often leaked, right? And, and that was the only way you were going to be able to communicate with people around the world, or really not even around the world. It was short distance. That was the first cell phones. And he did that, and it irritated me no end because it tore up one of our trucks. And then he said, you got to have a cell phone too. I said, Pat, let me go through this with you. I have a two-way radio in the truck. I have a beeper that I have to wear while I'm out in the field with the men digging in the dirt. I have a two-way radio I have to tear with me everywhere I go. Let me give you this, this is a little hint. If you try all three of those and you can't get me, there's a reason for that. <laughs> this story that we read today about the Holy Spirit coming down upon the people is one of power on the church. The church comes alive at that moment. Things change dramatically. When my partner and I, Pat, decided to start a business, we got together and I said, I want to name our business PS Site Management. 
Now that's pretty easy for you to understand P, S, Pat, Steve. But it was P period S. You know what you do in the letter? You have write a letter and then you forgot something or you had some brilliant idea that you wanted to highlight and you'll go P S. God loves you or something like that, right? And, we, and it was by purpose that we did that because we want our customers to know that we were going to go beyond the contract. We're going to give you more. And that's what God does at Pentecost. He says, I'm going to give you more. I'm going to put more on you. And, and this is why. This is what God is saying to us at the day of Pentecost. He's saying, you know, you've seen all this that I've done. This incredible stuff that Jesus did on the earth. He's my man. We're together. One. And I am giving you his spirit because I trust that you'll use it and even greater things will happen. That's what God's saying, really. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit is about. I trust you, God says. I trust you with my heart. I'm giving you my heart. We are a Pentecostal church. Now, I know I can tell. I can tell some of you real uh, uh, lifelong Episcopalians are going... Did he say, well, I heard he say, yes, we're a Pentecostal church. Now, for some of us, the reason that kind of gets us unnerved is because we think of people talking in tongues and falling out in the spirit. And every now and then we'll have an acolyte fall out, and we like it when that happens because it, it's kind of <laughs> symbolic of that, right? Now, look at this. Look at this. This is, this is uh, the day before Memorial Day, right? right? And look at, look at all the empty seats here. That's unconscionable. We should be busting out the doors. There should be more people in here than this. Lots more. Now, should is a difficult word, you know, but, but it, here's, here's what I believe. When the Holy Spirit uh, is active in the church, there's no stopping where we go. Because the Holy Spirit can't be contained. The Holy Spirit will take us in places that are unimaginable. And we're a Pentecostal church, and this is the truth. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, we aren't a church. We're not at all. We may be something, but we're not a church. And that's what this story is about. The biblical account is, this goes like this. I had to explain it to the vestry on, uh, what day do we meet? Tuesday. Did I do an okay job? Okay, good. In the beginning, when nothing was had formed, right? It says God's Spirit moved across the deep, right? And things began to take shape and form and, and life began to be, right? You ever tried to live without breath? You can't do it. You ever seen somebody that has COPD and how difficult it is for them to get around? I, you know, I've had blood clots. I know what not being able to breathe would do for you. It's a rough. And you won't live very long if you don't breathe. Well, actually, you, if you don't breathe, you won't. You'll be dead, right? We know that, right? We got that. You all clear on that? In the biblical account, this breath was God's spirit. That's how it came to it. And it says, man was created in God's image, right? That's us. That's the spirit of God coming upon us. And it was real. And it's palpable. And throughout the biblical account, you hear the Ruach of God in the Old Testament and the Pneuma of God in the New Testament moving in and out of the people's lives. And wherever the Spirit is present, things happen. Incredible things happen. And here on the day of Pentecost, we read about these people that were, uh, people were telling them they were drunk. You know, they're drunk, right? And I get accused of that every now and then uh, because I'm a dreamer, right? I'm a dreamer. Well, you're just drunk on your own craziness, right? Well, let me tell you, PS site management still exists today. And I've been a priest for 25 years now. Oh, well, it must have been a good idea, right? And it must have been an idea that grew. Breath. We come together like the people at Pentecost. They didn't know what to expect. They were holed up. They were together because they were afraid. They had some idea that if people found out who they were, they would end up in the same boat that Jesus did. You know, they'll get crucified or arrested or thrown in jail or something. And yet, God had a plan. And God sent His Spirit on the people. And they began to do things they wouldn't have imagined had the Spirit not come upon them. 
That's what the church is. That's what we're about. We come together to experience grace. You all know that? Grace. And that grace is really God's spirit in the world. Grace. But there's always buts, isn't there? I grew up in a church where we were taught from very early on in Sunday school that the age of miracles stopped at the last apostle. When the last apostle died, the age of miracles ended. Right? I was taught that over and over again. I never could quite get it. If that's so, why, why do we bother to talk about the Holy Spirit? You know, just get it out of our vocabulary. If it no longer exists and is evident in the world, then why do we talk about it? Right? And I'd ask those questions. It's not for us to ask, son. That's how I become an Episcopalian, you know. Because we have a little room for that, a little wiggle room for the Spirit of God to work. We're a Pentecostal church. If the age of miracles is over, then we don't need to bother. We just need to go out there and live in the world and do the best we can. Why, why does that scare us? Why do we carry these cell phones with us into church? Who's, who's going to call you, right? Ghostbusters? I mean, is that what you're waiting on? You know, we don't need these. Not in church, Right? We have a different way of communicating. And remember, this story, Pentecost, if you're not familiar with the biblical story, this reverses what happened at Babel. Remember Babel, the story of Babel? The people were trying to reach to the stars. They wanted to become like God, and God just kind of scattered them and scattered their languages. And in this story today, we read God brings them back together, and their languages are all heard and understood. And Jesus said that would happen, didn't he? In the scripture we read from the gospel, didn't he say, I'm a semi-advocate. And you'll understand much more. You know, but we have things that happen that just get in the way. And we think, now how, how is this? Well, let me tell you. This, you know what this is? And you know why we don't want to talk about being a Pentecostal church? Because if we do, we'll lose control. If we give up these phones, if you give them up for a day, try giving them up for a day. Try, try not being on your computer, your phone. Remember these little antennas? We don't even need these anymore, right? One day, see what it does to you. You'll get the heebie-jeebies. You'll, you'll be calling the, uh, AA and asking them if you can enter into a program, right? Because it, when we have them, we have control. We have control of all those people on our speed dial list. We have control of all those people that are friends with us on Facebook, all that stuff, right? At least we think we do. Right? And then something happens. Somebody dies. Somebody gets diagnosed with a bad illness. Somebody loses their job or gets filed with divorce papers or, or something horrible beyond our imagination. Then you don't have control anymore, do you? But here's the good news. Every, every Sunday I preach a sermon and I have a little idea of what that is, what, what the message is, right? And I'll tell you sometimes. I'm going to tell you today. Here's the message. There is a God. And you're not it. We're not God. And that's good news. Because God is still in charge. God still has a plan. And God wants the best for us. But, but you know, if all these Pentecostal things happen to us, we'll freak out, right? We'll go, you know, and we'll, you know. And you know when you do that, your breath's being sucked out of the room. What God wants to know is that if you take on my breath, you'll be free forever. You won't ever have to worry again. You know, you, some of you read my article that I sent out. I appreciate you responding in, telling me you read it. I, great, thank you. you. You think that I really did that article? I mean, I did. I wrote it, I mean, I guess. But it was, I've read it six or seven times and think, well, how did I do that, right? I get up here and preach on Sunday, sometimes on fumes, right? And I think, how did I do that, right? Because I'm telling you, really, those of you that know me well know this is true. I'm just a goofball, right? And God somehow has anointed me to do what I do, and I know that. This is not me. This is the Spirit of God speaking through me. And if it doesn't happen, then cursed be me. And I get up here every morning before you all get here, and I pray. I say, Lord, speak through me. Tom's seen me do it. Every Sunday. And sometimes I'm just rotten. Rotten inside, rotten outside. 
And God somehow works through that rottenness. And that's what God does with our brokenness. We're all broken. We all have things in our lives that just can't be fixed. Humpty Dumpty, right? The brokenness is all around us. Here's the good news. We belong to a church where the Holy Spirit is present. And Trudy and I have received so many calls and letters and emails and stuff that it's good stuff. And some of that comes from people that have much more to deal with than we do. One woman told us about having buried a sister at 43, a sister at 47, and a son at 27. I don't know the level of her pain and grief. One of the people sent us a card, and I know that they buried two of their children. In fact, I got two letters like that. Life is filled with brokenness. I mean, that's what we all got to deal with it, right? And that's the trick. It's how we deal with it that makes the difference. Stay focused, I'd say to Pat. Stay focused. Don't bring me any more yellow tornadoes. That's not where your gifts lie. God has given all of us gifts. That's what the Holy Spirit tells us. And God will use us in extraordinary ways, way beyond our capacity, if we let him. And that's what happened at Pentecost. Extraordinary things. We'll read those in the days ahead. But, there's always a but. Some people can't get it. They just don't. There are people that have been in our church that have had losses. People die. Somebody in their family, right? Mother, daughter, grandmother, you know, whatever. And they expect something from the church. They expect the church to do something extraordinary. Reaching out, right? Well, they did for us. I mean, they are everybody. You know? Why is that? Because we have given ourselves over to this reality. As in the early church, there was self-sacrifice everywhere. People gave up control and said, I want to be a part of this. This is going to make a difference in the world, not just my own life. This is going to make a difference it's going to bring in the kingdom of heaven if we get focused on the source the sky's the limit and no matter what we go through God will be with us and God will lead us to the promised land that's a guarantee no questions asked stay focused give yourself up to something greater than yourself and there's only one thing that's greater than anything, and that's God Almighty. And God invites us in and says, I'll give you my spirit. I'll pour my spirit upon you. And I trust you that if you receive that gift, greater things than I ever did will be possible for you. Trust in the Holy Spirit and have freedom beyond your capacity to know. And that's good news. Those with ears to hear, let them hear.